In this video, we're working on an older cat diesel engine with what the customer thinks is valve train knocking. What that noise ends up being is, well, a little more complicated. We've got lots of problems we find, and the main cause is not what I was expecting. Hey guys, Josh from Dead Babe Channel, and continuing our theme with working on slightly older cat diesel engines, we are going to be working on, I believe it to be a 3406B, and it's in a drill truck, and it's here for an overhead, but it's here for an overhead because the engine's making weird noises. Usually overheads don't fix weird noises, folks, unless it is way out of specification, but let's go look at that drill truck. So this is actually a remanufactured 3406, somewhat similar to the one we were working on in the dozer. And checking the coolant here, coolant looked really dark there, but it's actually really clean red. What the heck is this thing, by the way? I'm sure lots of people know what it is. I don't know why it's there. Doesn't look like the AC is working very well, but that's not why it's here. It's here for knocking, and the customer thinks it's in the valve train. Running a cat oil filter. Adept Ape approved. Always check our oil. Oil, I can't get it to focus here, but it's low. It's below the ad mark, and it's really clear. Not perfectly clear like on a gasoline engine, but as you can see, it's not that really sooty dark oil. Which makes me think maybe we got a little bit of fuel dilution, or they just recently changed the oil, but the filter is about a month old, so kind of unusual that it's that clean. Now what does appear to be a problem is if you look on the ground there, which I'll go back to, it's pretty dirty. Running uh, Baldwin fuel filters here look like they've been recently replaced. Yeah, look, it's got a what appears to be a big oil leak. Pretty bad. They had just drove it in this morning, so it is running. Not running right now, obviously, but it it is a running engine. So not sure what's going on with the oil leak. It was not written up for that. And this solenoid, I wonder, I have not seen that before. That's either, I'm guessing, a cruise control or since this is a drill truck, some sort of speed control. It appears to be air operated also. So probably because they're running the drill, they probably want control of the throttle from the rear would be my guess. So could definitely use a little bit of... Uh, cleaning on that windshield there. It looks like it's covered in oil. Maybe that has something to do with the big oil leak. Let's start it up and listen to this noise that they were talking about. Now they had said they had the valve covers off, the customer's mechanic that is, and they could see that the bridges were, looked like they were walking a little bit. So that's why they think it's a valve. You can hear it there. It's definitely making a noise. Not a real deep knock, but definitely something not going on right. And it's running here. You can actually see blow by coming out by the oil pan there. I'm trying to see if maybe it was something off the uh, fuel pump here itself. You can see blow by fumes right there. Wasn't exactly sure what it was here, but. I didn't crawl under it here, I was just putting my camera to see, and you can see, yeah, it's pushing blow by and lots of oil up there. So what it is, is that's an oil dipstick lock plug right there, and it looks like it blew out, or maybe fell into the oil pan. Now luckily, I drove it in the shop after this. I've got a bunch of these block plugs. So before we start it, troubleshooting that is, I'm just going to put one in. It doesn't take very long, and as you see, I've got a few seals left over. So. What I did is I just put a block plug in there. I didn't even charge the customer for this because it I didn't want it leaking anymore. And it was such an easy fix and I already had one. I just, it took, like I said, about five minutes to just uh, put it in there before running it again. Because the more you run it, the more troubleshooting you're going to be doing. You're just going to be pushing more and more oil. Yeah, you can see it installed right there. And the customer said that it was really recent. It was not doing that yesterday because they were running this vehicle yesterday. It was, didn't have that big oil leak. So it looked like that is, it just fell out. And we'll actually get back to that block plug later because we end up finding it. But anyway, we're doing our valve cover here. Now they had said it was the forward and it definitely sounded to me like it's in the front of the engine where that noise was coming from. And they thought the overhead looked weird when it was running. So obviously that's why we're pulling the, our valve cover here. 
So running here, you can see I put a little like cane and air filter in there. I never like to run the engines without some sort of filtration, even if I have to run them with the valve cover off. And looks normal to me. I've got a quite a bit more recent 3406 mechanical valve train experience thanks to our bulldozer project we were working on before, but the bad part with this is there's definitely not louder with the valve cover off. I do not think this is a valve train problem like this. So what I do think it is is something else is going on. Possibly a rod knock. It could be a fuel knock, but it sounds like a mechanical problem. So we're draining our oil here. Going to cut our filter open, which this is our oil filter. And there is... Now, folks, if you've never cut an oil filter open before, little flakes occasionally are normal. However, you should not have multiple flakes in every single pleat. And this one has lots of little metal flakes. So obviously we do have something mechanical coming apart here. Now is that maybe the camshaft? Is that maybe a rod bearing or a main bearing or something else, a cylinder liner? Well, that's the point of this video is to find out what the heck it was. So yeah, lots of flakes, definitely a problem. And I uh, wanted to get a hold of the customer to make sure it was okay to pull the oil pan because obviously they're paying the bill on this. So. Now it has these quick drains, really nice for servicing. These make me nervous though. Uh, if, if I had my own truck, I don't think I would have one of these on there just because I'd be afraid a rock or something would hit it while driving down the road, but lots of trucks run them. Uh -oh. You do have to move the handle up or down, and I always, almost always mix it up when draining it, but if it is up or down, you can drain the oil out without pulling the drain plug, so that's pretty nice. Got our oil pan off here. Still have to get the uh, bench press world record block stiffener plate off here which is pretty heavy and let's look what do we find in our pan hey there's a block plug but more importantly if you look in the middle of the pan there there's a whole bunch of metal and that metal as you can see is kind of under number two cylinder and it's collected right there so i think we'll be taking a look at number two cylinder the most now obviously it's in a fluid it's in oil so that metal could have moved but that's a good place to start. So what I'm showing you here, folks, is even though the oil's drained, I'm gonna be removing this main oil feed line from the oil pump to the engine block. And here's something I've learned over all the years is no matter how much you drain the oil, this tube is always full of a lot more oil than you would suspect. So always put some sort of pan, do not ever lay under this dang thing, because when you tip it out, even the oil pump is still gonna have a lot of oil in it. So tip it up, you're gonna get uh, a little bit of oil. And of course the drain pan is almost never in the exact right place, but there you go. Well, at least we had a drain pan there. Haven't found uh, the source of our destruction yet though. This week's Destruction of the Week, we have a short video from Sam, and I've got it paused here, but it's an underground mining truck, I believe, and he said the turbo came apart. Grab it up just a tiny bit. Okay, good enough, good enough. <laughs> that looks like a scene out of Aliens or something. <laughs> the purple flame shooting out, but pretty cool. So what we've got here is we've got our block stiffener plate off, we've got the oil pump out of the way, and what we're, like I said, what we're looking for is something out of the ordinary. So you can see our camshaft from underneath, and it looks pretty good. I don't see any damage to that. Now, if the camshaft was damaged, you probably would have heard more noise when we had the valve cover off, because then you would have had valve train noise, and probably would have noticed something with the rockers or something looking different. So what I'm looking for here is I suspect we have a spun rod bearing, possibly. So what I'm doing is making sure the rods move. Now you get a little bit of horizontal movement out of the rods when they're installed. About, I'm gonna guess, I've never really measured it, but it's probably five to 10 thousandths. It'll just move just a little bit. So what I'm looking for is if one's not moving, probably have a problem there. But they all seem to be moving fine. So I was like, okay, let's look at the piston. Maybe we got something going on with a piston or a liner. Something like that, and you can see, you can see it right there. Like keen eye could at least 
but we will get a lot closer here with our camera and you'll really be able to see it oh yeah that is what we call vertical crosshatch folks that's not even vertical crosshatch that is super super deep scoring not sure what went wrong here but those ridges it's you can't really tell that well but obviously they're bad they are really bad they are several thousands of an inch deep the piston itself is also like that so I'm not sure and it's on both sides why it's like that maybe they overheated it real bad or something but it, it's weird that all the other ones look fine and that one did not look fine so and big problem we've got the metal has been going through the oil system for so long that it started to damage all the bearings we pulled this rod bearing yeah those are scratches in our crank journal not real good and the bearing does not look good either take a better look so this is the upper which that one's usually the more worn one for being not super old remember this is a cat reman engine the bearing does not look bad or that looks pretty bad so you've got embedded metal into the bearing probably all the bearings look like this luckily for the customer they have a spare 3406 waiting to get swapped in but the problem with that is this is a drill truck which means putting it in there is going to be a little tricky I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video and if you have any comments, suggestions about this video, please leave them in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.